What do you have considered as, or what do you consider as to be very difficult in the first stage of a company or being a young entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. So I think what's, what's very difficult is to get started for most people. So oftentimes entrepreneurs stumble into their first venture. For example, for Gabriel Mead was more a hobby. It was not the decision, we quit our high paid jobs, tell our, I don't know, our uh, spouses that uh, we will have little uh, money in the coming years and become entrepreneurs, but it was, hey, what do we do after school, let's program something and hey, perhaps even we can even sell a few of those uh, thingies and uh, pay for our pizza and cola, yeah? Uh, and I think that's a big barrier for entrepreneurship, that people who are a bit more advanced in life um, have it more difficult to create a company because they ask themselves very, very many questions and then often um, decide to not set a company up now but in the future when all those issues have been clarified, which is probably never. I, I, I can absolutely underline that. The moment you, you start um, is when you get the answers. Yeah, they, if you just sit there and theorize, and try to make the perfect plan, the, the plan will be rubbish after one week. Yeah? You will understand that your assumptions were wrong, uh, the market data was plain bullshit, and uh, you will probably even discover that the product that you thought was awesome, uh, actually nobody cares. But in the process, you will probably, or perhaps you will find another product or another service or something else, mm -hmm. um, that, that you will stumble upon on the way. So, um, what, what people should try and, and, and free themselves of is the idea of having a perfect plan and then going along this perfect plan. Um, it's, it's much more helpful just to start. You stumble, you will fail, you will find out what doesn't work, but you will also find out what works. And most companies we, we know today that are very successful in what they are doing um, did not start as exactly the entity or the product or the even with the positioning they have, which they have now. You know, there are there are a lot of examples. For example, um, take take Twitter, um, which was a side project of something completely different they were doing, um, and um, and there are, there are more examples uh, to this. So if you start, um, you will you will find out what works, and you will uh, even more important find out what doesn't. I think the important thing is that you learn quick, and that you don't spend too much money learning. And um, I think what's really difficult is to stay optimistic during your course, um, and at the same time uh, to to face the brutal facts. There's this book. Um, from good to great, which um, which describes exactly that concept, and that's very diff difficult to do. You know, to stay realistic and at the same time optimistic, I think that's one of the one of the secrets as well. It's a, very, it's a thin red line, but it's a thin red line. There are many entrepreneurs who are uh, totally optimistic and don't see that they are failing often for years, and they are even more not entrepreneurs because they have always been too skeptical and overly analytic. Yes, yes. So I think um, I think creativity and intelligence can be can be quite an obstacle on the way to success for entrepreneurs. Okay. Today it said that the business model is key to success. But uh, when I listen to you it sounds almost like you should start without a business model. It very much depends. Very much depends. If you are in the copycatting business and you are yeah, copying business ideas, uh, I recently, in a, in a moment of despair, tweeted, don't think, benchmark, and it totally meant this. If you are copying a functioning business model, don't try to outsmart people who are doing that for years, uh, first-year business angels or venture capitalists who gave their input, just copy it. Yeah. A friend of mine who, uh, who built a very successful internet company said um, there were several people copying my company. They all didn't get 
the whole business model, tried to outsmart me in different parts, but then the parts didn't fit together anymore, so I'm in the lucky position to be the worldwide market leader today, even though I just much later entered Europe and Asia. Um, so that really, um, that really depends. And of course, the business model is important, but there are models where it's about execution. If you have a clear prototype, then it's about executing that model and benchmarking what works. And there are more innovative models where you need um, a vision. For example, what Gabriel is doing with uh, Aka Aki is a classic example. It's not about execution, it's about finding a positioning. So that reminds me very much of of a tool that is more coming from the corporate world being the Gartner quadrants that describe their models where it's about in the, in the current stage about vision and about execution and those are two different sort of games you can play. The, the point is that um, when you're in a, in a situation where you're not copying an existing model or modifying an existing model um, but starting something that doesn't have any kind of um, um, predecessor, um, then um, this, this line between uh, being optimistic and being realistic mm -hmm. is even, even harder to distinguish. It's, blurry, yeah. it's, it's really blurred because um, it's, it's hard to, to, um, to find the right criteria uh, to measure whether your idea um, is, is worth all the work or not. Because mm -hmm. probably um, it's not the right time, but everyone says to you, well, it will be next year, or two years, or it's the next and upcoming mm -hmm. things. And I've seen trends that were the next upcoming things for 10 years mm -hmm. now. And this gets frustrating after a while. But there's one thing that's, that's helpful in this. Um, even, um, I mean, there will be like dark valleys that you will have to pass, and you will be frustrated, and you will think, well, I could have had a much simpler life and much longer, um, cozier sleep and a better salary and everything. But um, the one thing that, that, that helps in this situation is if you really think that what you're doing is a good thing. If you think, I mean, this is this American idealism, whether um, what Kawasaki, Guy Kawasaki mm -hmm. said, is your product, is your company helping the world um, to become a better place? If you believe that, then it's much easier to go through these deep valleys of uh, disappointment um, because even if you fail in the end, you fail doing something you thought was right. If you fail doing something you never believed in, okay, that, that, that's that's really a problem. Okay. Uh, the next question. So you, you started already uh, doing business as a young company some years ago and you directly went international uh, with Shiganos. Uh, do you think or would you recommend young entrepreneurs to go international directly and how should they do it? I think it totally depends on the business model. Like for a software company, and I really mean software, like package piece of software and selling that, um, or a classic software as a service approach, um, there you usually are international very quick because you can spread your, your fixed costs, like your research and development costs via channels that do exist in different countries. Uh, and there are companies, like many internet companies, um, that have their competitive advantage completely on a local base, right? If, for example, you have a company like, let's take a classic like eBay, and you conquered one local market, then it's it's not very easy in the next step to expand if in other markets there are already local players, because their competitive advantage is not technology, but it's a brand, it's a customer base, and it's in particularly stable, that advantage, if there's a network effect, like in eBay or in Xing or in other networks, doesn't mean that has to be forever. If you take a look at StudiVZ versus Facebook, for example, um, but those companies can stay local and often have to stay local. And what I think is, is a good lesson as well you can learn is that a variety of companies should not be started outside of the United States. 
So if you have a product company that wants to go global and your strategy is not to capture the German market with a, let's say, eBay-like company, then it makes much more sense if you want to go global to do that from the US and not to try that from Germany at all. And that's an advice I very often give to entrepreneurs, for example, in the software industry. The sad thing is that uh, in 90% um, they set up their operation in Germany nevertheless. And I think that's a big, big competitive disadvantage because you don't get the right people, you don't get smart money, if there's something like smart money, but let's say you don't get cheap money for your company, your exit uh, uh, possibilities are limited. Um, that's another thing. If you want to be in the, in the internet space in Germany, make sure it's not a technology business, but you have, that you have um, a competitive advantage that is specific to your region and that is defendable, um, for example, for the German market. And that's something that um, you should um, consider as well when thinking about internationalization, and that's timing. Um, for example, in, um, with Akaaki, we, we've been in a situation, I think, two years ago, um, where we um, saw a, 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 a window of opportunity to go to France with the product um, using very, very good PR that we had and that we got actually by accident. It wasn't, it, it wasn't really a plan. But we found out that for, for reasons we actually we, we don't really know until now, um, there was a huge media interest in France um, for this product that was used uh, at that time only in Berlin, which was Akaki, of course. And the moment we understood that reporters from Le Monde were coming to Berlin for a week to research to do research on Akaaki and we were having the, 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 the French main news show here, then we understood, okay, something is going on there, and we decided to, to launch there, which was a, 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 a great decision, and, and it wasn't very much planned ahead. I mean, one week before, we didn't have the plan to do that, but we saw, okay, now that the, it's, it's now or never, and let, let's, let's leverage this, this um, uh, momentum that's there. Half a year later, or one year later, there were there were real, there were a lot of copycats on the market. Then the market is very crowded, and then you you wouldn't have a chance.